I have already made a video on ERP Next installation on Windows using Docker and most of you have asked various questions and I thought that I should be answering in this updated video. So first step here is to download the Docker Compose file. You can directly download it from here and it will open the raw file of this which is available on GitHub user content or you can click on file on GitHub so this file will be available here. You can of course download it here and get started. I have already downloaded and it is available in C drive data docker frappe. So this pwd file is downloaded here and all the information is provided here in the link. It is available on C docker frappe and pwd.yamf. So what we need to do is that once this file is available we need to run this command on any docker environment whether linux or windows. So for the sake of this tutorial I'll be using powershell. You can use the terminal of a linux environment also. So I'll be simply going here cd space data. It all depends where you have stored it. So as I mentioned that I have stored it here. It could be any path for you. Let me show you my Docker environment here. Here you can see in Docker there is no container right now. There is no volume right now. There are these images of Frappe because these images were already downloaded and I don't want to download them again. I want to show you the content of this YAML file so that you understand it better. pwd.yaml and I'll be just opening this in Visual Code Studio. These are all the services. There is backend container which will be created and then there will be configurator. Create site will be created as a service and then there is DB which will be created as service. These volumes also which will be created. So DB data, Redis queue data, Redis cache data and site data. These all volumes will be created. These containers will be created and one network will be created. And here if I go to DB also, so you will see here that DB will be using image of MariaDB 10.6, localhost and password will be admin. So this is how it will be configured. You can see that it will be using the latest image of ERP Next version 15.4. Of course, these images are having predefined configuration. You don't need to do any configuration here. If you are expert, you can make the changes into the image and then you can recreate the image and then you can install. If you want to install any uh, additional application, you can create the new image. For example, HR module. So you can create an image based on the main image of ERP Next and then you can deploy it. Now you can see here that configurator will be running the bench commands here. It will be setting the database and similarly create site in this particular section. If you see it is creating a front end site. So the job of this particular container will be that it will create the front end site and then it will stop. So you can see these are all the containers within the particular stack. So PWD will be the stack which will be created and inside this stack these are all multiple containers and volumes that will be created. So we'll be running this and I'll show you and what it has created. So I'll be going back here. I will see the list of files which are available with me. You can see here pwd.yaml. And in order to run that command, I have already shown you in the blog which I created. So we'll be using the command docker compose and dash p which is our project and it is pwd and then dash f where I'll mention the file and our file as you can see this one is the file pwd.yml. So pwd.yaml space up. I'll not be using dash t. I'll do up and it will show me all the commands here. Before running that, I'll just open this containers here. Right now, there is no container, so it will start creating the container. I'll press enter. It will show me everything what is happening right now. So I'll be able to see what is being created. All the logs will be available. And here you can see that it has started creating the containers. That there are 10 of 11 containers. And right now there is one container configurator which has stopped because it created the configuration and it stopped. And right now there is one more which is create site. It is creating the site now. The moment it will create the site front end completely then it will also stop. If I see the details here you can see here that it is installing the ERP next and it is doing everything by itself. We are not touching anything. So we'll be waiting for this to be completed because it will install the Frappe. It will install the ERP next as an app and where it has been defined if I open that file in the Visual Studio again in configurator it has created the configuration of the database in create site you can see here it had to wait for the DB DB container has started and Redis container has started Redis queue Redis cache all of that had started it created the bench new site admin password is admin DB root password is admin and then it installed the application ERP next and it created the site as front end. 
So front end is the site name and ERP next is the application which is installed here and uh, the default site is also front end and DB password is also admin and the site password is also admin. So you can see here that this configuration will be automatically created. So those who are asking me that what is the DB password and where the DB is there. So I will just show you all of that. So right now nine containers are running out of 11. So which containers are sleeping right now? One container which is configurator one, it has stopped and then as create site, it has stopped. These both containers have done their job and it has stopped, which means that 11 containers were created from this file. And if I see the volumes, it has created all these volumes also. So DB data, PWD log, PWD Redis cache, and PWD Redis queue, and PWD site. Now, as you see that these containers are already running inside the stack, which is PWD. So if you are using Linux, of course, so you can go through the command line tool also. If I press Control C, everything will stop. You can see all the containers have stopped. If I go to the stack, I can just run this stack again. So all the containers will start again automatically. These two containers will exit again because they have done their job. Now, if I try to access this, I'll be going here to localhost colon 8080. You can see here that ERP next is already running. And now your question was, what is the user ID and password? So we saw in the configuration file also, the password for the site is admin. I will not do configuration here. You can do that later. So these are all the containers which are running and if you are using Linux, of course, so I'll show you that also. So you can go to your shell and in shell, you can type in the commands here. And here in Docker PS, you can see these are all the containers running. Redis cache, PWD frontend, PWD backend, and this is MariaDB. If you see this one is MariaDB, I can even go to this container also here. I'll just copy the container ID here. And I can go into this container and run the terminal commands within this container. So how I can do that? I'll be doing docker exec extension interactive terminal. And here I'll be using that container ID space. All right, so this will be front slash slash bin slash bash. And now you can see that I'm inside the container, which is my MariaDB container. So in MariaDB container, of course, you can use MySQL command dash P, which is for password. And then you can type in the password admin. So you are inside the MariaDB database. If I type in show databases and you will see here, these are all the databases available. And of course, this particular database will be ERP next database. So if I use this database, so I'll be using use and I'll use this database. Now you can see here databases change to this database. I'll type in show tables. So all the tables which are there in this particular database is available here. Of course, you can use the backup commands also here. Otherwise, you can take the complete backup of this container also using the command. And even you can run these commands directly from here also if you are using Docker Desktop. In Docker Desktop, you can see here this container name, which is here is DB1. So in DB1, you can click on Terminal and you can run all these commands here also. For example, MySQL dash p and it will ask for the password password is admin and you can again log into the terminal directly from here so i can exit this and i can show you the docker ps which will give me a list of all the containers here create site has created the site which is called front end and front end is also the container so container name is also front end and site name is also front end so we'll see this pwd front end dash one so i'll be copying this container number which is this one and I'll be running the command again here which will be docker exec dash it space the container id and space slash bin slash bash now I'm inside the container and you can see here that it has automatically gone into the folder called frappe dash bench in frappe bench so you can see only two apps are there one is frappe and one is erp next and if I go back to the sites, uh, this is the site front end which is created and of course assets is also default site. If you want to see the configuration of the common site configuration, so I can simply copy this cat and I can just show you what is the content here. This is the configuration of the DB server and default site is front end. Uh, location of Redis cache is here. Now if I show you the site which is there, so site name is front end. So what is in front end? You can see here site configuration. 
So I'll just get again here to configuration. Now you can see here it shows me the DB name, the DB password which is being used to connect this particular front end to the DB. Containerized deployment means that every container is separate from each other container. So there is a DB container, there is a queue long container, there is backend container, there is front end container. So your question was also that how to take the backup of container and then restore the container. Containers today are the best way to deploy any application because it is easy to deploy and easy to manage. So I have provided the link in the description where you can understand that how we can start using the containerized environment. And in case you want to create your own image, now you can see here that these are the images which were downloaded. You can see here Frappe ERP Next, which is tag is 15.4.0. And all of these images are there. So Frappe ERP Next version 15 was also there. I can see it, it is unused. I can even delete this because I don't need it. It is 1.69 GB. So from here, it has created the site. It is in use right now. This image is used by these containers. So backend is also using the same image. Frontend is also used. WebSocket is also using the same image. Schedule is also using the same image. So this image is being used to create multiple containers. And every container is doing its own job. So configurator one and create site one. These are both stop. See that there is a backend container also. If I see the terminal of this in backend container now these are two containers one is the backend container one is frontend container if i stop this container which is backend container so it has stopped responding right now so this means that frontend site is of course dependent on the backend container from the front end the application is being accessed but the application is dependent on all these containers so if any of this container will stop of course your website will stop working and when you start these containers again it will not create the volumes again because the volumes are already there if volumes exist so all the data will be stored inside the volumes so your site data will be stored in the pwd site your uh, db data or database will be stored in the db data your logs will be stored in the pwd logs cache data and queue data will be stored here in next videos i'll show you how you can take the backup of your containers and then how you can restore those containers into a different environment so without doing any configuration again you simply need the backup and restore the backup and it will start working without any issues